All right, everyone, it's been known for quite some time that there is a link between excessive fat intake and the growth of cancer. Now we've got a biochemical study, link in the description archived, of course, showing a more direct correlation. That is that cancer cells literally can feed upon lipids and, and that being deprived from them helps to prevent them from metastasizing. This is important. We have an obesity epidemic in most of the world today. Um, in nations where you've got malnutrition, you have the white death, you have tuberculosis often. Um, tuberculosis is fairly common in populations around the world, but the actual symptoms of wasting disease, that is literally wasting weight, tend to be suppressed by a proper amount of nutrition. So if the person's not like literally already, you know, not getting enough nutrition, uh, both in the terms of vitamins and minerals and caloric intake, um, if they are living a relatively healthy lifestyle, symptoms tend to be suppressed, the disease can clear itself. Um, this is, is a problem in areas of the world where there's famines and stuff, you end up with tuberculosis, also typhus and things like that, uh, due to uncleanly conditions uh, that carries on the dust and fleas and, and nasty things like that. With fatter populations though, once, once they've gotten past the point of, okay, we've got a healthy diet, I'm getting enough food and exercise and sun and all these things, it's relatively healthy. Once they go past that into the decadent stage and become whoop, obese, then you end up with more cancers. This is why cancer was relatively less common maybe a hundred years ago. Back then, people there was a, a balancing point in the industrialized world. Roughly from the early 20th century through roughly the 60s or 70s, thereabouts, the, uh, the middle of the nuclear era. There was a time when people valued exercise, etc. It was understood when you become older and senescent, you tend generally to gain weight. Not everyone, but a lot of people. Uh, but younger populations, they tended to be more fit. Um, slimness and, and some musculature on men was considered attractive. Now they're trying to push the dad bod thing, that's a bad idea. Uh, no offense to anyone out there with a little extra chub, you're probably not going to get cancer from that, but now we've got this study showing that the suppression of uh, fat entering into cancerous uh, material can actually stymie its growth, its uh, ability to replicate, its ability to spread, etc. I recommend, and have for years, self-improvement for people. Um, get a little bit more exercise, eat a little bit less or and or healthier foods. For instance, you can fill yourself up with legumes uh, as opposed to eating that hamburger. If you're splurging once in a while, this is my MO with regards to food, on a McDonald's hamburger or something, you're probably not going to get cancer from that one particular burger. But I know people, and I've known people, that will twice or three times a week <clears throat> eat out unhealthy food and stuff like that. Like last night I made lentil soup, this vegetarian version. You can make the French style version with bacon, it's pretty good. I just prefer the vegetarian one. And it tastes like a souped up, pardon the pun, version of the Progresso lentil soup. It tastes very similar, but it's fresher. Um, I make it a little bit more herby and a little bit less salty than the canned ones. And it was perfect, it came out perfectly. I also double up the spinach because uh, spinach and lentils is a match made in heaven. Just ask anyone who's ever been to India, I'm sure they'd probably agree. Um, I like to cook some of my own food. I like homemade meals. Uh, they don't have to be all from scratch or anything like that and you know, spend hours a day in the kitchen, but it's nice to have healthy food, generally speaking. I like a lot of green vegetables, um, unprocessed meat, like you know, hand me a ribeye instead of a burger, I'll be happier. I'll eat the burger sometimes, it's okay to splurge, but not on a regular basis. And I do like pizza. I will admit, once in a while, I will splurge on pizza. I figure you got all the major food, you've got your dairy, you've got cheese, you know, you've got your toppings. I usually use mushrooms or black olives or both. Those are healthy. And then you got like sauce. That's basically a vegetable, right? It's just herbs and tomatoes. <laughs> I'm being, I'm joking here. Uh, it's, it's not terribly healthy for you, but once in a while, it's okay. But if you lose a little bit of weight, assuming that you're not already within the average weight uh, range, uh, I tend to be on the low of normal. I'm, I'm like maybe one point above technically a little bit underweight. Uh, I can't remember what my weight was the last time and I've been gorging since I quit alcohol. I'm not really gaining any weight. If anything, I think I've lost some water weight and now I have to make up for lost time. I'm in that very special category of people over 30 in the Western world that actually should eat the fucking hamburger, I suppose. 
So I'm going to be, uh, I don't know, I'll whip something up uh, in due time. But lentil soup, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So there is now a more direct link. We've known that there was a tangential link. People who were morbidly obese were more likely to get cancer. My thought is if there's more tissue there, there's more possibility that a specific cell gets corrupted and becomes cancerous. That's always been what I've believed potentially to be the case. But all that fat that's being stored up can feed cancerous cells. If enough of them are being, you know, are propping up uh, at any given time, your body has the ability to lice or to pierce cancerous cells. It'll detect them and attempt to destroy them. It can only do this to a limited degree, though. If there are too many that are cropping up over time, eventually all it takes is one to be able to successfully metastasize. You've got stage one cancer. It can spread and cause all sorts of problems. Maybe it's in the marrow. That's particularly uh, particularly bad bone marrow cancer. Epstein, I mean, uh, Weinstein apparently has been diagnosed with that. He's probably going to die. I mean, nobody's going to bother trying to save him. Uh, he, sh he should take one for the team to say, well, my life is ruined anyway, so don't bother giving me treatment, DNR. Um, you can get cancer in the lungs. That's particularly unsurvivable. Oddly enough, brain cancer more survivable than lung cancer. Uh, I think they don't do as much research on lung cancer because of the heavy correlation with smoking tobacco. So a lot of people silently will be like, well, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, or liver cancer, you know, because it's often correlated with throwing back too many bottles. Um, other forms of kids like breast cancer, everyone has sympathy for them, but, you know, fuck the smoker over there. That's entirely self-inflicted. I digress, though. Uh, I do notice there's a little bit of cancer hypocrisy out there. Um, I would suggest if you are overweight, lose 10 pounds. Yeah, you don't need to do heavy exercise or something. Restrain your caloric intake. That's all you have to do. Focus on foods that are very nutrient-dense. Legumes are a great example. Dark green veggies. Things that'll fill you up but they won't add as much caloric intake. Broccoli is a really great one. Um, certain fruits, berries are always relevant to my interests. I'm gonna have to get some more of them later, actually. Actually, I think there's some mixed berries already in there. Blackberry and raspberry. I believe, I don't know if this is actually true. I, I doubt it myself, but I believe it takes more calories to chew up and digest raspberries than you get from them. I am not sure if that's true. I believe it is of celery and lettuce, however. Celery, one of the uh, one of the greatest vegetables, by the way, <laughs> used in every good soup known to man, practically. I happen to be a soup person myself. Um, I, I don't really try to restrain my calories because I've always been a skinny bitch anyway. Like the most I ever weighed right after I got to the Netherlands, because I'm sampling all these exotic foods and shit like that. And I was like gorging myself on all this stuff that I wasn't used to, fucking cheeses and meats and everything else. I did manage to get up to like 185 which for a person who's 6'2 is still within the normal range. I can't remember my weight right now, but it's very close to being underweight. And I like it that way. There's less material in my body, less likelihood that I get cancer. Apparently, according to the study, uh, that's actually true. Also, it's almost Halloween, and I wanted to look more Skellington-ish than, you know, I don't want to look like Santa Claus when I'm 60. I'm not interested in that. I would prefer if I start getting a little bit of tubbiness, I'll just starve myself. I'll just go on a fast. I don't give a fuck. Uh, that's the way to roll. Lose some weight, get a little bit more exercise. My exercise tends to be in the form of hiking and mushrooming and gardening and things like that. By the way, that is a good form of exercise because then you're also growing food and it's healthy. I'm going to retool the garden for next year, though. I've got a shit ton of work to do out there. That's why I haven't made a garden update yet. My apologies. That's about all. Peace out.